What's going on guys? It's the Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to my studio. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. I told you guys in one of the last videos that I, I created, I was going to try new things and kind of bring more of myself into this channel. It's been a few years of me doing pretty consistent video game news and I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, believe it or not, as soon as I get done with this video, I've got a lot of news I need to get out. But I wanted to talk to you guys and, and get your perspective on some things that actually happen around me. Uh, I'm a pretty funny person. A lot of people probably know that I'm a funny guy. Uh, and I like to have sometimes heated conversations and new exciting conversations uh, with people with differing opinions than my own. And so I took it upon myself uh, to join a Facebook group by the name of, get this, <laughs> The Real Confederate Citizens on Facebook. It's a group of mostly Caucasian Americans uh, from the Deep South who idolize the Confederate Army, their loss in the Civil War, and the controversial battle flag of the Confederacy. I read tons of comments. <laughs> I got called a nigger a bunch of times. They, they love throwing that N-word out like it really hurts my soul. I don't know why. And I actually had some pretty interesting conversations with those actually able to hold a conversation on this controversial subject especially having a different opinion from a black guy. I don't know why they invited me. Maybe they saw my wife was white and they said, oh, maybe he can come on in. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, the idea of most people in groups like this is that the battle flag of the Civil War is a symbol of Southern pride, right? And I live in the South. I'm from Georgia. Uh, or their heritage is another thing I hear a lot, heritage. I think it's baloney, personally. <laughs> so I went and I did a ton of reading on the subject and I wanted to tell you guys my conclusion of all that great reading. Today I ask, is the Confederate flag a symbol of Southern pride or Southern racism? It's a big question. So I wanted to get into some of the actual facts and I'll put links in the description uh, to this information because it's all valid information. And another big thing I hear is that it's liberal propaganda to say that the, the Civil War was about slavery. Actually, it really was about slavery, and I'm going to prove it to you today. The Civil War was the bloodiest war that ever took place on American soil. The war began when the Confederates bombarded Union soldiers at Fort Sumter, South Carolina, on April 12, 1861. The war ended in the spring of 1865. Robert E. Lee surrendered the last major Confederate army to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9, 1865. The last battle was fought at Palmetto Ranch, Texas, on May 13, 1865. So, it lasted for four years. Where was the Civil War fought? Because it's a Southern thing. The Civil War was fought in thousands of different places, from South Pennsylvania to Texas, from New Mexico to the Florida coast. The majority of the fighting took place in the states of Virginia and Tennessee. The Civil War was also contested on the Atlantic Ocean, as far off as the coast of France and the Gulf of Mexico and the brown water of the Mississippi River. So it was a vast war. At the beginning of the war, the northern states had a combined population of 22 million people. The southern states had a combined population of about 9 million people. So this disparity was reflected in the size of the armies of the field. The Union forces outnumbered the Confederate uh, forces roughly 2 to 1 and 620,000 people died in the Civil War, making it the deadliest war on American soil. It's over half a million people dying for what cause you has. So what caused the Civil War? A lot of people say, oh, I've heard people in this Facebook group say it was taxes and, and it was infringing on states' rights. So let's find out exactly what caused it. While many still debate the ultimate causes of the Civil War, Pulitzer Prize-winning author James McPherson writes that, quote, the Civil War was started because of an uncompromising difference between the free and slave states over the power of the national government to prohibit slavery in the territories that had not yet become states. When Abraham Lincoln won the election in 1860 as the first Republican president on the platform pledging to keep slavery out of the territories, seven slave states in the Deep South seceded and formed a new nation, the Confederate States of America. The incoming Lincoln administration and most of the northern people refused to recognize the legitimacy of the secession. They feared that it would discredit democracy and create a fatal precedent that would eventually fragment the no longer United States into several small squabbling countries. So, 
that does seem like a recipe for disaster if every state decides on their own. You know, we don't like the new rules. We don't like the new leader. We're going to leave the union and form our own countries. And basically, it'll be just an insane, wild, wild west type of situation. Now, I've heard people in this group and, and elsewhere talk about African Americans and slaves who actually fought in the war. And did this actually happen? Well, it did. What role did African Americans play in the war effort? With the issuance of the Emancipation Proclamation in September of 1862, African Americans, both free and runaway slaves, came forward to volunteer for the Union cause in substantial numbers. Beginning in October, approximately 180,000 African Americans, comprising of 163 units, served in the U.S. Army and 18,000 in the Navy. That month, the first Kansas colored volunteers repulsed a Confederate attack at Island Mound, Missouri. So we held them back. <laughs> Men of the USCT United States Colored Troops Unit went on to distinguish themselves on battlefields east and west at Port Hudson, Louisiana, Honey Springs, Oklahoma, Fort Wagner, South Carolina, New Market Heights, Virginia, and African Americans uh, constituted 10% of the entire Union Army by the end of the war, and nearly 40,000 died over the course of the war. So, African Americans did fight with the Union. Now, something that I've heard spoken of as well as black people fighting uh, with the Union was that there were slaves fighting on the Confederate side, and part of that's true, I would, I would suggest. Slaves and free blacks were present in the Confederate lines as hand servants and manual laborers. On March 14, 1865, the Confederate military issued General Order Number 14, which provided for the raising of black combat regiments, but there is no official military documentation that indicates these orders were carried out or that any black soldiers were ever properly enlisted in the Confederate Army. There are a few photographs of blacks in Confederate uniforms, but these appear to be hoaxes. So, I would say that more than likely there were slaves fighting for a cause they didn't understand, uh, or a cause they were made, they were held back from the truth. They didn't know they were actually fighting people who were trying to free them, or they fought alongside the masters who raised them, and more than likely they felt were their family at that point in time. So, let's talk about the actual declarations of secession. That's a big contested argument. A lot of people who believe that the Confederate flag was actually a part of American history or a part of American heritage, Southern heritage, don't know the actual facts or the words that are stated in the actual uh, Declaration of Secession from some of these Southern states. I want to give you two good examples of what they were thinking about and why they wanted to secede from the Union. Mississippi, their Declaration of Secession read, in the momentous step which our state has taken of dissolving its connection with the government of which we so long formed a part, it is but just that we should declare the prominent reasons which we have induced our course. Our position is thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery, the greatest material interest of the world. Its labor supplies the product which constitutes by far the largest and most important portions of commerce on earth. These products are peculiar to the climate verging on the tropical regions and by an imperious law of nature. None but the black race can bear exposure to the tropical sun. These products have become necessities of the world, and a blow at slavery is a blow at commerce and civilization. That blow has been long aimed at the institution and was at the point of reaching its consummation. There was no choice left but the submission of the mandates of abolition or the dissolution of the Union, which principles had been subverted to work to our ruin. So that's what Mississippi thought about slavery. And it's the very first part of their secession from the Union. So I would say it was probably the most important aspect of the secession for that state. Now let's go to Georgia, my state. This is where I live. Georgia's Declaration of Secession read, The people of Georgia, having dissolved their political connection with the government of the United States of America, present to their confederates and to the world the cause which has led to the separation. For the last ten years, we have had numerous and serious causes of complaint against our non-slaveholding confederate states with reference to the subject of African slavery. They have endeavored to weaken our security, to disturb our domestic peace and tranquility, and persistently refuse to comply with their express constitutional obligations to us in reference to that property, and by the use of their power in the federal government, have striven to deprive us of an equal enjoyment of the common territories of the Republic. So, it's about 
what, guys? It's not about taxes. It's not about states' rights. It's about the right to have black people as property. They even call it property. Black people were considered property back in the 1800s before, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation freed us. And so for the people who say, this just isn't true, I can't know, I don't want to believe it. It's right there. You have Google, go pick up a history book and read the Declaration of Secession by one of these southern states and you tell me what it means. It's just mind-blowing that people still believe this was not about racism or slavery when it's right there in your history. It's right in history books. I'm not a liberal. I actually can't stand liberals. So don't try to say this is just liberal nonsense. That's another thing they try to use. Now let's look at the word heritage. What is heritage? I mean, I, I hear it thrown around. I'm not sure a lot of people know what it means, but if you look up the actual word, heritage is a noun. Property that is or may be inherited. An inheritance. The synonyms are inheritance, birthright, patronymy, or legacy. So, is it your legacy to have the Confederate flag fly? Is it a part of your inheritance? I mean, is that a part of your inheritance or a part of your culture that you're proud of? If so, then, you know, we have a difference of opinion. For me, my heritage is the things that my family passed down, not a war that was fought somewhere in a small gap of time. You know, this war lasted for four years. What happened to your family before that war? Does that heritage go away? Is the only heritage of the South within 1861 to 1865? Is that what you people who love this flag believe? Are you telling me that all those years before 1861 didn't matter? The things that your family passed down didn't matter or just the most hateful and most disgusting time in American history. This is a disgusting moment in, in American history. It really was. People actually went out there in droves and killed and murdered Americans to keep black people as, as property. That's disgusting. And if I was, if I happened to be a Caucasian person from the South, I would be ashamed of that history. I'd be ashamed of my forefathers for, for believing that and basically trampling all over human rights because the African American was, was just so little and so nothing compared to its Caucasian counterpart. So we talked about the declarations of secession from two states, but there were actually a lot more states that were on board with leaving the United States, becoming their own sovereign land because of slavery. In 1860-61, to 61, 11 southern states seceded from the United States to protect the institution of slavery, forming the Confederate States of America and precipitating the Civil War. During the war, the Confederacy and its military forces used a variety of flags, but the flag that became most associated with the Confederacy was called the Battle Flag. That is the Confederate flag that most people see. Organizations such as the Sons of the Confederate Veterans adopted the flag as a symbol of Southern heritage, but the flag also serves as a potent symbol of slavery and white supremacy, which has caused it to be very popular among white supremacist groups in the 20th and 21st centuries. This popularity extends to white supremacists beyond the borders of the United States. Today, the use of the Confederate flag is often controversial. While a number of non-extremists still use the flag as a symbol of Southern heritage or pride, there is a growing recognition, especially outside of the South, that the symbol is offensive to many Americans. However, because of the continued use of the flag by non-extremists, one shouldn't automatically assume that the, that the display of the flag is racist or white supremacist in nature. The symbol should only be judged in context. And I can respect that. Uh, you know, some people are confused. I mean, to me, it's insanity, kind of. I don't want, I would never want to uh, confuse a symbol of such racism and hatred with a part of my heritage. It's not who I am. And even if I was a white guy, I wouldn't be that way. I just, to me, the, the whole Civil War was a, a group of people who f felt that blacks were so little and so nothing, and they were complete property, they were willing to die to keep this property. It is mind-blowing to me. So here are my final thoughts. We have rights as Americans, and I value them all, including the freedom of expression. We should always be allowed to express ourselves and speak loudly, even when opposed. The battle flag of the Civil War, as well as the war itself, is a stain on our history, and an era that should shame anyone with ties to the war and its pro-slavery, anti-country sentiment. While some may actually do some research on this topic and expand their thoughts on the subject, others will continue to cry foul. And these are the people I'm talking about in groups like the one I've joined. Claiming that the fact that the secession centered around maintaining the status quo and owning slaves 
was only fabricated as a liberal agenda. That's what they say. It's liberal nonsense. There was no slavery. We weren't talking about slavery. We had nothing to do with it. Even though the declarations of secession mentioned slavery first, they will still say, no, that's not true. It's all liberal nonsense. As an American, I'm very happy to see that even in southern states, this symbol of hate and cowardice is being taken down and removed. And I call it cowardice for one reason. If you stand for this, this country like I do, then you stand for the country as a whole. If you are willing to leave your country because they want to make African Americans or any minority equal in the eyes of the law, the way that God created man as equal, and you feel like that's so wrong that you want to leave your country, then you're, you're a traitor to the country. You're a coward. You're a traitor to the United States. And all the people who joined that war were traitors to the United States. They were cowards and they were traitors. They did not want to back the country they were born in. When the country made a humane decision that black people weren't going to be treated like animals anymore, that we were going to be given the right to read and write and and, and educate ourselves and live free like anyone else has the right to, to be, the right to live. But it was such a poor decision by the government to give these people who were animals and they would never amount to anything. To give them rights, it was just so bad to these southern traitors that they wanted to leave the country, secede from the Union and, and, and make these southern confederate states, which led to a bloody war where over half a million people died. And this is what I say about the fact that they use this heritage talk. This thing isn't any more a symbol of heritage than the swastika is to Germans. Think about it. I like to think that the swastika isn't held high in, in Germany as Germans shout, Germany will rise again. It's insane to even call it heritage. It's a blight on, on history. It's a blight on civilization. And it's something that Southerners should want to forget. I wouldn't want to be associated with that mindset. But, you know, old habits die hard. And let me just say this to everybody out there who is in this mindset that the uh, Confederate flag is amazing and it's so good and it's just a part of our, our heritage. The South will never rise again. The South is in a moron-induced coma because the people who believe that are basically egging on the possibility that we're going to go to war again, some racially motivated war in the South. And that'll never happen. There are too many intelligent and caring people in the United States now. It's much better than it was back in the 1800s. More people are rational and logical people and compassionate people. The South will never rise again. The only time the South will rise is every morning when these Southerners wake up. Rise from your grave. That's about as far as you're going to get. I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts on the subject. So please feel free to share. I just wanted to talk to you guys about this because I got into a two-day debate. I owned a lot of people in this Facebook group. Just completely destroyed them. Uh, in their arguments. Oh man, it wasn't about race. You fucking nigger. I mean, I'm just doing the voice because, you know, they're down south. But I, I was called a nigger a million times and that doesn't bother me at all. I wouldn't even care if you guys said in the comments. I mean, because you don't know me. <laughs> you don't know anything about me. You don't know my life or, or the way I raise my children or the kind of husband I am or the kind of work that I do. So it doesn't really matter. It's name calling. And it's like the, the most juvenile form of offense. You call someone a name because you can't actually argue your point. I've today giving you guys a lot of information and make sure you check the link in the description so you can find out for yourself these are respected government organization sites where you can actually see real history and get it from a, a divine source i would say uh you know the real history of, of the civil war as my good friend colin moriarty says you know you can fly the flag and if i see it i'm not going to say anything to you i mean hell i got pro donald trump bumper stickers on my car i don't care I have Hillary for prison on the back of my, my, my van. <laughs> I don't care what people think. I have a right to do it. And you have the right to hold that up and, and, and do whatever you want to. But as Colin Murray already said, I think it's an extremely poor taste. And I think that if you're going to have a flag like that, you need to at least understand what it means and what it represents and what it represented versus what you, th what you want it to be. That flag was a symbol of pure hatred. That flag was a symbol of treating people like animals. And fighting to the death to keep those people suppressed as animals. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you did. I know it probably went on a little bit longer than uh, I wanted it to. But I wanted to express this point and let you guys know how I feel. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is the Southern Confederate flag, the Confederate battle flag, a symbol of hatred, racism, 
or Southern Pride. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you'd like to show your support for the channel, please visit my Patreon page. There's a link in the description. Anything will help out. I'm trying really hard to do a great thing for you guys with this channel in the future, and hopefully one day do this full time. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.